uh, as we continue to move through day one of the Centre Court uh, MBA Festival with Poets and Quants. Great to have you back. We've already had some really fascinating sessions with uh, some of the top US and European business schools. We continue that European theme with another uh, of the top schools. Uh, and today the focus on the Cambridge uh, Judge MBA. Uh, and to talk about that, two voices. One, uh, in terms of uh, admissions and recruitment, uh, it's lovely to welcome Anwen Gray, who is the head of MBA recruitment and admissions, and also a student voice. And as we reach June, coming to the end of uh, an intensive but fascinating one year uh, in the Cambridge program, uh, also welcome uh, Abel uh, Anel Abieva. Uh, Anel had um, uh, originally done her uh, undergrad in finance and an early career in uh, in, in the financial uh, services sector and then a transition uh, and has spent the last four or five years before the Cambridge MBA uh, working at Mars that confectionery food pet care group uh, a real multinational but we'll be finding out how uh, Judge has been able to open up new doors and opportunities um, and when MBA, one of the, the, the top ranked business schools in the world, obviously one of the top schools in the UK, we all have heard of Cambridge, but tell us a little more specifically about the Judge MBA, you know, what makes it so special, that, that reputation that it has, that blend of business and technology, life sciences, and uh, such a special location. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Matt. And thank you to everyone joining us today. We're really excited to be here. So I think one of the things that you've just highlighted straight away for um, me, Matt, there is the location of the business school. So Cambridge Judges Business School, um, obviously we're located in Cambridge in the UK um, and we're not that far, so we're about an hour or so from London. So you're really centrally connected. Um, I'm sure a lot of you listening today have been to Cambridge, but just for the benefit for anybody who hasn't, and um, just to give you a little bit of an idea about Cambridge, the city itself. Um, so it's a relatively small city um, and the business school is at the centre of the city. So we're quite a small sort of school, um, but it certainly doesn't mean that there's a lot going on. We're actually located in Cambridge within the 50 mile radius um, of Silicon Fence. So there's over 1,500 companies generating a combined revenue of 12 billion. Um, and actually, we'll talk a little bit more about the programme later today, I'm sure. Um, when you do the MBA, one of your first projects is very likely to be connected with one of these local companies. So just as soon as you get in the door, you're already getting out there, networking, connecting, and sort of making the start on whatever your career change might be. And, but as well as the business school, the, the sort of being in the sort of a tech hub and all the exciting things going on, you're also surrounded by this unique um, sort of architecture and the history. So you can think of all the famous people that have walked through the streets before you, um, Professor Stephen Hawkins, um, we, we were the lady that won the, the Nobel Peace Prize or should have won the Nobel Peace Prize a couple of um, years ago. So there really is just more and more and more things that you find once you find yourself in the city that will become open to you to be able to explore. As well as that, one of the highlights about being part of the business school and part of the University of Cambridge is you're also part of a university um the wider University of Cambridge. And that's one of the things that's quite unique to the Cambridge programme, the Cambridge MBA, is you actually have another way of diversifying your network beyond just your business school cohort. You'll be a member of a college. Um, and again, that opens many other opportunities. It's a little bit like your community out with the business school. So it's where you sleep, where you eat, where you uh, explore new ideas, attend different events. So everything from day one, as soon as you enter the school and get yourself here in Cambridge, um, you'll find a wealth of different opportunities. Well, I, I guess uh, the laws of gravity uh, and Sir Isaac Newton four centuries ago. Uh, I mean, tell us a little bit, Anwen, about that relationship between judge and the rest of the university, both in terms of belonging to a college. But that means that any dinner conversation, you could be sitting next to what an, an astrophysicist or the next Nobel Prize winner. Uh, it really does create this very sort of um, extraordinary mix, I guess, of, of business in, in a wider societal context. Absolutely, Matt. I'm really glad you mentioned that. When I first started working for the business school, that was one of the things that really sort of stunned me from day one. I remember meeting with an alumni in Chicago and her saying to me, well, do you know what? On my first week, I was sitting next to somebody that was um, exploring and researching Egyptian manuscripts, I think it was at the time, whereas I was actually in a college. So as I mentioned, you're a member of a college when you're at the business school. Um, and this particular um, person I was speaking to um, was also sat at a dinner table next to sort of 
graduate undergraduate students as well that were exploring new ideas for new businesses so again you never know who you might meet and we've had several MBAs that have then gone on to set up businesses find potential future business partners through their college systems and the network that they've been made through them as well as that and um, who have so many opportunities out with the business school within Cambridge itself so there's lots of different centers so there's the entrepreneurship center so perhaps that might be something that you decide to explore in a path that might sort of open more opportunities for you further down the line I think one of the things um there's always there's always that saying I'm sure um and will come across that is the fear of missing out there's so much to get involved in over your year here in Cambridge you really do have to prioritize what you want to do um and no matter what you do you will have a good experience it's just which route you want to follow I it's like being a kid in a in a candy store. Where there's so much to to to, to choose from. Um, in terms of you know the class size of of the, of the actual MBA cohort, uh, and then the many different options that it's an intensive one year, and how you can then personalize that experience, new ideas, um, uh, new business concepts. Uh, so so how is the program structured to then take uh, students through the twelve months? Yeah, so it's probably best to just give you a quick overview of the programme. So as I said, for a one-year programme, we're taught in um, from September to September, um, and there's four main terms to the year. Um, and supporting the full year, you also have a careers provision that help you throughout the year. Um, so in terms of class size, we have 200 students on average each year. Um, no single nationality dominates, and we really allow you to try and build close bonds of classmates from all over the world um, to help you um, sort of maybe work and socialise in different teams beyond that you, what you've maybe experienced in the past before. Um, we have people from very sort of traditional backgrounds, so maybe your more consulting finance backgrounds, but we also have people joining us from very different backgrounds as well. And again, that really adds to your um, ability to have the experience of having access to people you have perhaps haven't already before. Throughout the term of the year, we follow a micro to a macro pathway. So you firstly, in your first term, it's very much sort of hitting the ground running, working on team building, team projects. Um, and then throughout the year, you begin to tailor the year to be more suited to your own career needs. So we do that for a number of different projects. So you will have um, in the first term, you've got the Cambridge Venture Project, um, which is working, working with a local Cambridge company. I mentioned in the Silicon Fen area, so it may well be with somebody or a company in that area. And then as you go through the year, you consolidate your learning with these milestone projects throughout the year. So the Cambridge Venture Project, in the second term, you do the Global Consulting Project, which is a live consulting project working with a client um, could be based in the UK offices, it could be elsewhere in the world. We have had people working all over the world in different projects throughout the year. And um, certainly people are more welcome to contact us after today's event and we can point them in the direction of examples. There's too much to tell you um, today. And then um, you do a board impact study in your third term, which is where you begin to sort of, it's focused on the concentration, which you um, touch in your third term. So just to give you a bit more information on that, um, you have electives throughout the year. You'll take two, three electives in the second term, three electives in the third term, and your concentration, it's a bit like a specialisation, essentially, um, but that will align with two of your concentrations, um, but I can go into more detail about that. And then in your final term, you do your summer project um, to consolidate everything that you've learned over the past year. Wow, that's that's a lot. It's and a lot I'm to sure take Anne, in. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Anne, as Anwen describes so many different opportunities. Let, let, let's go back, I guess, a couple of years. Uh, you know, there you were for working for this uh, family business, but at a you know conglomerate, multinational scale. Uh, thinking about your next career step, you've worked in you know different projects, finance, logistics, and others. So, what led you to pursue an MBA? Tell us a little bit about the process and, of course, how you ended up choosing the Cambridge MBA. Thank you very much, Matt, and thank you very much for hosting us today. So uh, I would say, actually, that everyone most probably has a point in their career when uh, they think about future role and basically future step, but this step could be just outside of the immediate reach. And in this sense, MBA most probably is just a perfect opportunity to build the bridge 
freeze where you are now and where you want to be. And even though most probably you don't know exactly how to reach it, MBA can help you to reflect on your strengths and basically like to network and to build the muscles to get yourself ready for the future opportunities. Sometimes it could be most probably a great way just to understand what exactly you want to do in the future. And I don't even mean the workplace as such, but most probably in general in the future. And I think I just found myself in this position. So basically, I was thinking like uh, what I want to do. And I would say actually the MBA was just at the right time and was probably that was a very conscious decision that uh, I really wanted to explore. I wanted to expand my network. I wanted to basically understand uh, how to move forward. And this was a time when I was uh, researching various MBA programs and thinking most probably which one could be potentially a good fit. Uh, uh, I actually, if, if I think about criteria I used in order to identify the right program, so basically some of them quite trivial, like let's say ranking, so basically just have a look at ranking and understand which program most probably might uh, fit, uh, might fit uh, your, your future goals. Then I would say location, which is very important because, and it's also important because uh, basically you're building your network. And for a few years after graduation, the expectation is that the people will be around this place. And basically, you're building your network for a few years just like to uh, leverage it or post MBA as well. So location, I would say actually the program structure and the program offerings and the program lens. It was also important for me because, to be honest, I wanted to do a one-year program. And so, yeah, I, want, I just didn't want to go beyond one year, even though I realized that it could be a very intensive journey. But at the same time, yeah, I really wanted to do one year program. And I just choose, I would say, two uni programs to apply. So I basically applied to two programs, I got accepted into both, luckily. And then I was in a position where I have to make a choice <laughs> and I chose Cambridge. And I can say actually that what basically attracted me so much in Cambridge, first of all, it's an opportunity to uh, explore wider university. So basically it's not just business school as such. It's a university with a uh, more than 700 years history. And uh, basically everything that Enven mentioned and you can uh, benefit from connecting to and exploring different things just uh, university wide. Uh, secondly, I would say it's a um, project-based program because uh, I found this in be very practical. Uh, and when mentioned just like two projects, two main projects, but in fact, actually, I managed to do four or five projects within this year. So, and I would say it's just a perfect blend between theoretical learning and practical experience, especially when you're in a classroom with uh, such a diverse cohort of people and uh, and you're basically, uh, I would say, constantly challenged by different, different uh, people, people coming from different backgrounds and voicing different ideas that most probably you haven't been familiar before, uh, before being basically in the same uh, study room. And I would say also it's a safe place to explore. It's a safe place to try. Uh, new things and so uh, that was uh, one of the things that adopted me in Cambridge and basically I would say also uh, the cohort which is 220 people we have 220 people it's uh, it's uh, enough uh, to uh, it's basically a great number I would say actually in order to build meaningful relationships but at the same time to benefit from a, a, a network of alumni and network of peers. Now I've described this very successful uh, career that you were enjoying with, with Myers based in, in Kazakhstan. What was really helpful for, for you as you were doing the research, um, just in terms of connecting with the school, were you able to talk to students, current graduates, some of the different events that Anwin and her colleagues had organized just to be able to give you a sense of, of the magic, the energy, the opportunities that you would then pursue? Yeah, uh, oh yeah actually, obviously, pre-MBA, I reached out to alumni and current students, and specifically from the consumer goods industry, just in order to understand and to get a sense of the program, and basically what are potential benefits post-MBAs this program can give. And I would say, actually, that... Uh, uh, 
it was very, very useful and it was very beneficial. And basically uh, what is good about Cambridge is not just like focus on consulting and investment banking, most probably uh, those are popular career paths. It's really uh, gives opportunities in different sectors and basically for people with different backgrounds. And I think it's really awesome about our Cambridge. Perhaps, and when some of the magic uh, and the rewards of your job every year as you think about crafting this diversity of uh, experience and different cultures and bringing them all together and seeing what happens uh, next. <clears throat> how, how do you then, within the context of a one year intensive program, and you know, Anil was saying it's, it's a great chance to explore. So do applicants need to have everything worked out as they apply and you know, make it sound like they know exactly what they want coming out of business school? How, how are you sort of assessing their background and experience and what you think that's going to contribute to the judge community? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thanks for asking. I think when I when I speak to when I'm sort of out and I'm speaking to people, whether that be sort of in person, online, um, or if they're coming to an open day at the school, um, I would say that not not to look into too much into what everyone else is doing and be put off by other people that have perhaps done different things, but think about what actually the story is they already have themselves and they have done to date um, because we everyone's got a different path everyone's got a different journey and it's really your how you articulate that and how you put that into the application so yes you've got the the, the entry requirements that you see on sort of every business school's pace so the minimum work experience and um, the essay questions the cv the, the standards which you are looking for but it's really how you sort of portray yourself as well so yes we're looking at the essays being um sort of well written we're looking at that you've met the requirements but it's also being able to talk about well what you want to do now and what you want to do next and there's no right answer you, you might have a plan a you might know 100 what you want to do but you might not and that's also absolutely fine as well it's being able to understand that there might be different options and if you are looking at transitioning but you're not 100 percent sure what is plan b or what are you doing now to help you be able to make that happen to explore those paths to help you further down the line and um, i wouldn't say there's an ideal answer or is that um sort of um all the, an ingredient to make it sort of the, the ideal application or the ideal path. Everyone is unique. We have people that come onto the program who have a clear idea on day one what they want to do. They'll then maybe try a concentration or attend a class or through their CVP or their GCP projects, discover something completely new and think, oh, do you know what? I would to try that instead. So there isn't an ideal answer. It's just unique to every individual, really. Right. If, if I take you back to day one, Anel, uh, and Anwin's comment at the beginning of almost this fear of missing out, there are so many different uh, opportunities, clubs, uh, obviously the different courses that you're going to take. Um, what is that course load like and how does it also then enable you to experiment in joining different clubs, the wider Cambridge University uh, experience that you're also part of? And, and how do those different student organisations also then contribute to the learning experience of the Judge MBA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, as Anwen already mentioned, oh, we have three academic terms and one summer term and two mandatory projects. And basically during the terms, oh, we are divided into small groups, let's say five people. And basically your study, which, which is called study group, and your study group is people whom you are supposed to spend this term with in terms of class preparations, in terms of, I would say, like uh, internal debates going on around some topics and uh, those is this the kind of your family for this term and everything basically each and every assignment you're supposed to deliver in this study group so in this sense i would say that cambridge supports this uh, group like experience group based experience and gives opportunities like by setting you in a very diverse group to with most probably people whom you are not uh, whom you just met and uh, you need to deliver uh, a piece of assignment let's say or you need to deliver a project and basically i would say actually in this sense our chemistry really supports you to work in teams on various academic assignments in terms of outside classes, they have various opportunities to connect with also like-minded people because there are students or interest groups and people uh, mainly they are could be professionally focused or it could be like just by formed by interests and there are various opportunities to 
uh, to be participate in the student tours group and basically uh, various speakers could be brought to school and uh, there are lots of events going on there. Uh, for, um, so as you said, actually, there is a fear of missing out, especially at the beginning of the year, because you literally want to try everything, especially in a place like Cambridge, which is not just business school, but also a university and with excellent facilities. And uh, you, you really just don't know where to start from and uh, how most probably how to try to be everywhere. Uh, I think actually what is important for me, uh, at least uh, what I felt is what is really important is to socialize as uh, as much as you can i would say basically like uh, because it's going to narrow down on till the end uh, by the time actually you are about to graduate your interests are going to evolve and you just most probably prioritize one thing and uh, drop out from the other but at the same time mm, all these connections and all the network that is built based on these activities and the, uh, on the events and academic work is exactly that will form, I would say, actually the network you're going to carry forward or even after your MBA. So I think it's really important to be social because uh, even though like everyone comes to an MBA with different goals and priorities, some people might think I oh, just need to get a job and most probably I'm not going to participate in any uh, anyway. I'm just going to start applying from the day one. Uh, I would most probably encourage just like try to meet new people because people are something that is very unique. And so if you think about it, basically, there is just enormous power in the cohort because everyone comes from a vast uh, amount of experience in different fields and just such a great opportunity to leverage this uh, knowledge and this experience and uh, I would really suggest actually like socializing as much as possible because once your interest evolves you will just naturally and gradually reduce or uh, I would say the number of activities you want to partake but at the same time it's really important to build this network to meet the people and just like to provide you with a food for thought like what what's going on around and what most probably I could benefit from. You found a great ambassador for the program, uh, Anwen. As we think about the last two very turbulent years, um, uh, emerging from a pandemic, we're slowly starting to travel again. Perhaps you know, reflecting on a sense of purpose, or you know, what we would like from life, from our career, uh, and next steps. There are those that have been thinking about business school maybe for years, BA, but others for whom you know it's only now starting maybe to come into their uh, into their field of view how do you speak to not not the less traditional uh, sort of profile but just individuals in terms of when might be the right time and 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 also your fundamental belief with the skills that you're then developing whether we go through health crises financial crises that you're going to be better off with the cambridge mba and this wonderful network than without it Sorry, I didn't yeah. quite hear all the question there. Was that directed to me, Matt? Or it, it, it got very quite... long on the question, didn't it? Yeah. So sort of um, thinking, well, you know, some people have been thinking about business school for years. I've only started to think that, you know, I want some change as we emerge from this pandemic. And, and how you sort of say, well, you know, what, what's the right time for you? Because the MBA, any year that will always pay off with this fantastic network, the skills that you're developing. So it's always a good investment. Yeah, so I think um, in terms of is it the right time, is now a right time, attending events like today is first off the best thing that you can start doing, start doing your research. I think that a lot of, um, one of the things I speak to a lot of candidates who I think they find it quite daunting, sort of listening to so many schools, um, looking at so many different things, but actually take it as a time to discover yourself, where you're at now and using it as a way to sort of really enlighten sort of where you want to go, how you want to do it, and really use it as sort of your own professional development to help you further down the line. So doing your research and using it as a sort of a tool to help you initially, and certainly whichever business school, if you do decide to go to a business school after doing that research that you go to, it will certainly help you on your career further down the line. Um, 
if it's the right time for you, and um, I think a lot of people will know themselves, but perhaps you might want to have a contact conversation with your company if it's something that you want to do. Maybe you're looking at transitioning. Maybe you're looking at trying something completely too. So it's really reviewing where you are at at the current time. So again, attend events. Um, the business school at Cambridge, we are starting to um, attend events from this Sunday, sort of in person. So it's an exciting time. So we are out there. So keep an eye on our website. And um, we attend a lot of different fairs and um, similar to sort of to the Poets and Co sort of Central Courts event today. We're doing profile reviews. We've got alumni panels. So getting out there and speaking to people and seeing if it is right for you. It's a huge decision to make. It's a huge um, sort of investment, but you've also got to think of the return on investment for you in the future and how doing an MBA and whether it be an MBA, whichever school you decide to go to, how that will help you sort of own your own career and give you that toolkit over the next sort of five, 10, 15 years um, down the line. Um, so hopefully that's, that's the first part of your question. The second part, can you just remind me again, Matt? Sorry. Just the, the, the long-term value, whether you graduate during a financial crisis or a, a global health crisis. I mean, the skills, it's not just that first job of you come out of the MBA. This is going to continue to give back and contribute to your personal and professional development for, for 5, 10, 50, for, you know, for the rest of your future. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, I sort of, in, in terms of um, the business school, you're you're learning from people, you're, you're learning in a live situation, aren't you? So you're learning all your live consulting projects, your um, the Cambridge Venture project, you're working with companies that are real and live and going through the situation as we speak. So certainly, you know, the pandemic, we had MBAs um, or perhaps working um, with companies that are maybe sort of going through that at that same time. So you're going to have firsthand experience coming out of the MBA when companies are really looking for that knowledge and um, especially when you're working with faculty members who are perhaps leading researchers in their field and um, there's life practitioners in there you've got a lot of real life experience that you're going to be able to bring back and help them take their sort of companies businesses to the next level and navigate it through and um, so certainly you could look at it from that um, context but you're also the network that you make sort of throughout the year at the business school certainly in the MBA through your collegiate system and um, through cohort members that you sort of meet throughout the year you're going to meet people that come from all different areas different backgrounds and I'm sure sort of people I spoke to in the last couple of years, they still speak to their network on a daily basis. If they need help, then you've got a whole handful of, or a lot of handfuls, I should really say, of people to call upon. Um, but again, so that's the alumni network that you get. It's the concentrations in the sector specific content that you'll learn throughout the programme. Um, and again, it's maybe having that year out or two years out, I mean, one year for the MBA to really consolidate your learning and see where you want to go further. So I think that really, you're going to be at the cutting edge of, of education. You're going to be in the front line with whatever is next um, in, in the world as it develops and whatever it may throw at us next. <laughs> right, right. As, as, so, uh, you know, you've been through this intensive year, Anel. As, as you look back over the last year, two final questions for you. One, one of our viewers has said, um, how collaborative or competitive are things with your classmates, you know, whether it's in the classroom and, and academics or in terms of recruiting, you know, maybe several of you are, are applying for the same position. Did you feel that it's always been very supportive throughout the program? Yeah, I can definitely say that it's not uh, competitive, it's collaborative. And basically, when I was applying to Cambridge, I think uh, Charlotte mentioned it uh, during the test session that uh, Cambridge MBA is collaborative. And I can definitely uh, agree that it, uh, it's very collaborative because basically uh, having different people, as I said, from different backgrounds, we can, and as I said, it's just enormous power of knowledge and experience. And there is always smarter than you than are in certain fields. And basically, you can most probably bring value by being good, actually, in what you are good at. And in this sense, it's really collaboration in something, is something that basically makes uh, this program fly. And in terms of our recruitment, I would say, actually, that I was going uh, through this careers uh, funnel during the year. And... Everyone was very supportive, even though you could be applying to the same organization, basically. Uh, during uh, the consulting recruitment uh, season, I would say everyone is practicing cases together. So basically, I have never felt, I would say, any competitive spirit, but I definitely felt being supported. I definitely felt this collaborative nature of, uh, of the team. 
Right. And, and as you reach the end of the program, you know, you had choices, different programs that had made you offers. You made a wonderful choice. Um, something you think that you're always going to remember a, a sort of one standout experience, whether it's something you learned then about yourself or that was just part of the program and that will sort of stay with you. Definitely people. Yeah. Uh, or people I've met uh, during this year. Um, I also enjoyed uh, the projects that we did. I think actually I had a chance, for example, to do a project with one uh, famous European club, which is basically something that most probably I wouldn't have had chance to do if I hadn't done an MBA in Cambridge. Uh, and I would say we call it Cambridge experience. It's very difficult to quantify it or basic or just most probably explain how it feels. As we say, just something in the air. And I would say this Cambridge experience is exactly something that I would most probably remember, even not the MBA. Well, the, the class of 2022 and uh, Anne, when you're off and on the road, uh, this Sunday uh, to, to meet um, the next generation of applicants, I think for all of our viewers, uh, both you know your perspectives of putting together such a rich experience for the wonderful diversity that Anel uh, and the rest of her classmates uh, then, then collaborate and bring together. I'm delighted that we're able to capture that at Centre Court and give viewers, whether they're watching with us today live or you're catching this on YouTube or the Poets and Quants uh, Facebook channel, um, thank you both of you uh, for sharing more about the Judge uh, MBA. Uh, and um, I'm sure looking forward to meeting the next generation of applicants.